Hello everyone, this is Jenny and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will be talking about aplastic anemia, megaloblastic anemia, and myelodysplastic syndrome. Blood cells are produced in the bones of the body, mainly in the bones of the pelvis, ribs, and sternum, through a process called hematopoiesis. This process starts in the bone marrow, the innermost portion of the bone where the hematopoietic stem cells reside. This serves as the progenitor cells for all the different cell types found in the blood. In the process hematopoiesis, also called as hemocytoblast, can become a lymphoid progenitors or myeloid progenitors. The lymphoid progenitors can develop into lymphoblasts, which can then differentiate to some white blood cells such as T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, and natural killer cells. Myeloid progenitors can be differentiated into erythrocytes or red blood cells, megakaryocytes, which eventually give rise to platelets, or myeloblasts, which can be the other white blood cells like monocytes, neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. The normal values for red blood cells is 4.2 to 6.2 million. For platelets, 250 to 400,000, while the white blood cells is 5 to 10,000. What happens in this aplastic anemia is when there is damage to hematopoietic stem cells. This may result to decreased production in RBC, decreased production in platelets, and decreased production in WBC. Decreased RBC, also termed as anemia decreased platelet as thrombocytopenia, and decreased WBC as leukopenia. These three conditions may be called as pancytopenia. From the word itself, we can understand that pan means all, cyto means blood cells, and penia means decrease in number. So pancytopenia is the decrease of all types of blood cells. In most cases, the etiology of plastic anemia is idiopathic or without apparent cause. The definable cause of aplastic anemia include autoimmune disease, genetic disorder such as Fanconi anemia, viral infection such as parovirus, hepatitis, and Epstein-Barr virus, drugs such as chemo chemotherapeutic agents, anti-seizure, anti-inflammatory, antithyroid, and antibiotic like sulfonamides and chloramphenicol can destroy hematopoietic stem cells. Another is chemicals that may produce marrow aplasia, such as benzene and benzene derivatives that may be found in airplane glue, paint remover, and dry cleaning solution. Certain toxic materials, such as inorganic arsenic, glycol ethers, plutonium, and radon have also been implicated as potential causes. Lastly, is exposure to radiation. The clinical manifestations for anemia are pallor, fatigue, dyspnea, and palpitation. For thrombocytopenia, epistasis, purpura, pirache, and retinal damage. For neutropenia, is recurrent infection. It is also manifest such as fever, headache, lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly, pain, erythema, and body malaise. For diagnostic and laboratory procedure, there is CBC or complete blood count which may reveal decreased RBC, platelet, and WBC. Another is bone marrow, aspiration, and biopsy which may show hypocellularity decrease progenitor cells, and increase fat cells. For medical management, any offending agents are discontinued or removed, such as medication, chemicals, radiations, and viral infection. Another treatment is immunosuppressive therapy. Immunosuppressants prevent the patient's lymphocytes from destroying the stem cells. These include cyclorosporine, ATG, glucocorticoids, granulocyte, colony stimulating factor. For severe cases, it is recommended to have blood transfusion. Another treatment is bone marrow transplantation or peripheral blood stem cell 
transplantation. For nursing management, patients with aplastic anemia are vulnerable to problems related to erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelet insufficiencies. They should be assessed carefully for signs of infection and bleeding. To minimize the risk of infection, implement reverse or protective isolation, provide private room, practice strict hand washing, encourage personal good hygiene, including good oral daily shower or bath while mild soap, and pre-rectal care after using the toilet. Monitor vital signs including temperature frequently, notify health provider of fever. Minimize invasive procedures or possible trauma to skin or mucous membranes. To minimize the risk of bleeding, use soft toothbrush for mouth care, electric razor, razor for shaving, keep nails short by filing. Avoid intramuscular injection and other invasive procedure. Prevent constipation by use of stool softeners as prescribed. Restrict activity based on platelet count and active bleeding. Monitor bad count for menstruating patient. Avoid use of vaginal tampons. And control bleeding by applying pressure to the site using ice packs and prescribed topical hemostatic agent. Nurses must also monitor for side, for side effects of therapy, particularly for hypersensitivity reaction while administering ATG. If patients require long-term cyclorosporine therapy, they should be monitored for long-term effects including renal or liver dysfunction, hypertension, pruritus, visual impairment, tremor, and skin cancer. They should also be informed that the metabolism of ATG is altered by many other medications. Thus, new prescription needs careful assessment for drug-to-drug interaction. The following are the nursing diagnosis. The prognosis for idiopathic aplasia lies between these two extremes with an untreated mortality rate of approximately 60-70% within two years after diagnosis. The two-year fatality rate for severe aplastic anemia is 70% without bone marrow transplantation or a response to immunosuppressive therapy. In megaloblastic anemia, there is an impaired DNA synthesis which results in unusually large, structurally abnormal, immature red blood cells. Other cells derived from the myeloid stem cells are also abnormal. A bone marrow analysis reveals hyperplasia and the precursor erythroid and myeloid cells are large and bizarre in appearance. However, many of these abnormal erythroid and myeloid cells are destroyed within the marrow. So the mature cells that do leave the marrow are actually fewer in number. Thus, pancytopenia can develop. Because the erythrocytes are very large, the MCV is very high. There are two main causes, the vitamin B12 deficiency or the folic acid deficiency. Vitamin B12 and folic acid are essential for normal DNA synthesis. Folic acid is stored as compounds referred to as folates. The folate stores in the body are much smaller than those of vitamin B12 and can be become depleted within months when the dietary intake of folate is deficient. Folate is found in green vegetables and liver. We eat folate in the form of polyglutamate. This polyglutamate can be absorbed at the small intestine, particularly in jejunum. This polyglutamate can be converted to monoglutamate by the enzyme conjugase. This monoglutamate, i.e. folate, will go into the blood and it goes to the bloodstream in the form of methyl tetrahydrofolate. For tetrahydrofolate to participate in DNA synthesis, it has to get rid of methyl group. So it shifts the ethyl group and give it to the B12. Now the cobalamin is methylcobalamin. The tetrahydrofolate is free and it can participate to DNA synthesis. Tetrahydrofolate can be converted into methylene tetrahydrofolate and will be converted into dihydrofolate which can be converted back to tetrahydrofolate by dihydrofolate reductase to complete the cycle. And at the same step, the DUMP is converted by thymidylate synthase into DTMP 
and this DTMP is part of the DNA. Here, in methylcobalamin, in order for it to participate in DNA synthesis, it has to get rid of that methyl group, so it gives to homocysteine. Homocysteine plus methyl equals methionine. This process can be done by the help of the enzyme homocysteine synthase. Folate deficiency occurs in people who rarely eat vegetables. Another one is chronic alcoholism. Alcohol increases folic acid requirements and at the same time patients with alcoholism usually have a diet that is deficient in the vitamin. Some patients with malabsorptive disease of the small bowel, such as celiac disease, may not absorb folic acid normally. Folic acid requirements are also increased in patients with chronic hemolytic anemias and in women who are pregnant because the need for erythrocyte production is increased in this condition. So when folate deficiency, deficiency occurs, the tetrahydrofolate levels are low, which lead to slow DNA replication. In RBCs, slower DNA replication means fewer cell mitosis occur before, before cell matures. Less cell divisions means fewer but larger RBC. This may result to megaloblastic anemia. The clinical manifestations are cracked lips, sore tongue, decreased RBC, hemoglobin, and hematocrit, increased MCB, palpitation, fatigue and weakness, pallor and slightly jaundice, forgetfulness, fainting, and irritabil irritability and nausea and anorexia. For diagnostic tests, there should be a blood test, skilling test, and intrinsic factor antibody test. For medical management, folate deficiency is treated by increasing the amount of folic acid in the diet and administering 1 mg of folic acid daily. Folic acid is given intramuscularly only to people with malabsorption problems. Patients who abuse alcohol should receive folic acid as long as they continue to consume alcohol. Another cause of megaloblastic anemia is vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, is essential to DNA synthesis, nuclear maturation, and healthy myelin. Vitamin B12 can be found in meat and dairy products. A deficiency of vitamin B12 can occur in several ways. Inadequate dietary intake is rare but can develop in strict vegans who consume no meat or dairy products. It can also occur when patients undergo or has a history of gastric surgery. Decreased vitamin B12 absorption also occurs in conditions such as Crohn's disease. Faulty absorption from the GI tract is more common, particularly in the older adult. Another cause is autoimmune antibody. The autoimmune reaction results in atrophy of the parietal cells, leading to lack of glycoprotein intrinsic factor. The absence of intrinsic factor in this particular context, the resultant anemia is called pernicious anemia. Decreased intrinsic factor production by the parietal cells of the stomach causes decreased vitamin B12 absorption. Vitamin B12 has to bind with intrinsic factors in the stomach so it can be absorbed in the terminal ileum of the small intestines by the cells that have receptors for the vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex. Once it is absorbed, it, is, it travels to the liver where it is stored. A vitamin B12 deficiency does not become apparent for approximately 3 years after absorption ceases because the liver stores 2,000 to 5,000 micrograms of vitamin B12 and daily losses are only 3 to 5 micrograms per day. Decreased vitamin B12 absorption results in the following. Decreased RBC production. Decreased DNA synthesis in maturing RBCs. The RBCs do not divide normally so they grow big resulting to megaloblastic cells and impaired integrity of the cells in the GI tract vagina, and axons of neurons. Vitamin B12 deficiency may lead to disruption in DNA synthesis, to systemic manifestation, and may result in megaloblastic anemia. 
The clinical manifestations are neuro neurologic syndrome, paresthesia of the hands and feet, movement disorders, neuropsychiatric changes, bladder and bowel dysfunction, beefy red inflamed tongue, fatigue, chandis, anisocytosis, poikilocytosis, hyperpigmented neutrophils, and low vitamin B12 serum level. For diagnostic tests, there should be blood tests, scaling tests, intrinsic factor antibody tests, and bone marrow aspiration. For medical management, vitamin B12 deficiency is treated with vitamin B12 replacement. Vegans can prevent or treat deficiency with oral supplements with vitamins or fortified soy milk. When deficiency is due to more common defect in absorption or the absence of intrinsic factor, replacement is by monthly intramuscular injection of vitamin B12. The following are the nursing diagnosis. The prognosis is favorable if the etiology of megaloblastosis has been identified and appropriate treatment has been instituted. However, patients are at risk for hypokalemia and anemia-related cardiac complication during therapy for cobalamin ter deficiency. Myelodysplastic syndrome, or MDS, is a group of related hematologic disorders characterized by peripheral blood cytopenias and changes in the cellularity of bone marrow with dysplastic changes. In MDS, hematopoiesis is disorderly and ineffective. It affects individuals of all ages, more common after the age of 60. As discussed earlier, blood cells develop from the hematopoietic stem cells through a process called hematopoiesis. This involves a number of divisions and eventually results in three types of blood cells, such as RBC, white blood cells, and platelets. Once mature, it leaves the bone marrow and enter the bloodstream. In MDS, hematopoietic stem cells are damaged, so they give rise to faulty blood cells which don't mature but instead persist as immature cells called blasts. These immature cells are usually die in the bone marrow or soon after they go into the blood, so you really count on them to do the job of mature cells. As the condition progresses, immature blood cells gradually take over the bone marrow, which displaces and reduces the normal ones. In most cases, the causes of myelodysplastic syndrome is unknown or idiopathic. When this happens, it is classified as primary MDS. In rare cases, they can be caused by prior exposure to chemicals including benzene, radiation, and chemotherapeutic medication. When this happens, it is classified as secondary MDS. Secondary MDS is less common but has a poorer prognosis than thus primary MDS as it tends to be resistant to treatment and has more cytogenic abnormalities associated with it and in evolves into AML more frequently. Secondary MDS can occur at any age. The manifestations of MDS can vary widely. Some patients are asymptomatic. Other patients have profound symptoms and complications from the illness. Because MDS tends to occur in older adults, other concurrent chronic health conditions may exacerbate symptoms associated with the disease. Fatigue is often present with the varying levels of intensity and frequency. Neutrophil dysfunction puts the person at risk for recurrent pneumonias and other infection. Because platelet function can also be altered, bleeding can occur. These problems may persist in a fairly steady state for months, even years. MDS may progress over time as the dysplasia evolves into leukemic state, so leukemic manifestation may, may also present. The diagnosis of MDS requires laboratory testing which may include a complete blood count which typically reveals a mycocytic anemia, 
leukocyte and platelet counts may all may be diminished as well. A blood smear to determine the number, size, shape, maturity, and type of blood cells and whether they look normal. The official diagnosis of MDS is based on the results of the bone marrow aspiration to assess dysplasia and biopsy to assess characteristic of the affected cells. Cytogenic analysis is important in determining the overall prognosis, risk of evolution into AML, and method of treatment. Medical management strategies are based on the stage of disease and prognosis. The goal for treating patients with low-risk disease is to improve cytopenias, decrease blood transfusion requirements, and improve quality of life. The goal for treating patients with high-risk disease is to decrease the likelihood that the disease transform into AML and to extend survival. Stem cell transplantation, also called hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, is the treatment for MDS, most associated with long-term survival. Patients also frequently need repeated transfusions throughout the illness trajectory to maintain adequate hemoglobin and platelet levels. Transfusion of RBC may be needed to treat symptoms of anemia, including fatigue or shortness of breath. Transfusion of RBC can relieve symptoms, but if many are given, an accumulation of iron can cause organ damage and may require special treatment to remove the excess iron called iron collision or collision therapy. Transfusion of platelets can prevent or treat bleeding problems caused by having too few platelets. Platelets survive only about a few days, so platelet transfusion may be needed more frequently. Attempts to improve anemia and decrease RBC transfusion are often successful with the use of erythroid simulating agent. Higher than normal doses may be required to achieve an adequate improvement in hemoglobin. Adding myeloid growth factors such as granulocyte colony stimulating factors can boost responsiveness to this agent. This stimulate white blood cell production and may raise the white blood cell count. Granulocyte colony stimulating factor is generally only used in the setting of a severe infection. For nursing management, extensive instruction on infection and bleeding risk, monitoring of laboratory values, anticipate the need for transfusion, and instruct about receiving collision therapy. The nursing diagnoses are the following. For people who are diagnosed with MDS, the estimated length of survival is influenced by the risk category, the presence of underlying medical problems, and age. However, these numbers represent averages and do not necessarily predict what will happen in your situation. There is a considerable variation from person to person, especially in the lower risk group. The survival statistics for MDS are the following. So that's it for today's discussion. I hope you learned something in this video. Thank you and God bless.